Hello everyone, it's time to begin our franchise on Madden 23. If you'd like to see the sliders and settings I'll be going with for the start of this franchise, they will be in the description down below. Now the team we're going to be using this year, it's the Atlanta Falcons. They've been mediocre these last four seasons, going 7-9, 7-9, and 4-12, and, and then 7-10 and 10 this past year. They have not made the postseason since 2017, have not won the division since 2016, where of course, they made it all the way to the Super Bowl, but... We know how that's unfortunately ended for them. We will be using a custom head coach in Earl Rainier, a West Coast zone run scheme on offense with a custom offensive playbook. On defense, it's going to be a base 4-3 defense and the Chicago Bears defensive playbook. Our OC Henry Brock, he's got the right offensive scheme but does not have any talents, whereas our DC Jim Nichols, he has some talents but does not quite have the exact right defensive scheme. So we have some things to work on there. Our, our roster, we got to start a quarterback here. Marcus Mariota, they signed in this past offseason to potentially be the bridge starting quarterback while they developed Desmond Ritter, who they drafted in the third round out of Cincinnati. But in Madden, the ratings are pretty similar, so we might end up just going with Desmond Ritter, but I'm going to give Mariota a fair shot in the preseason, and we'll see what exactly ends up happening there. At running back, Cordell Patterson, he's going to be the lead back this year after having that nice breakout year for the Falcons. Uh, he's up to a superstar dev. But unfortunately, he is on the wrong side of 30, so we got to start thinking about the potential future at running back. And one player I like there is Tyler Algier, a rookie out of BYU. Before we talk about anybody else on this roster, we have to talk about Calvin Ridley. Now, I know it says that he has a PCL tier, but we all know he was suspended for gambling this last year, and he's going to be suspended the entire season. And he's on the last year of his contract, so I think we're actually just going to end up letting him walk in free agency and just move on from him. Let's talk about a couple of players that will hopefully actually make an impact for us this year. Wide receiver Drake London being one of them, a rookie out of USC that the Falcons just drafted in the first round. I plan on using London in the slot this year. Hopefully he can do some good work for us there, but if not, we can always move him out wide. Uh, wide receiver Brian Edwards, he's still really young. He's going to have to step up and be wide receiver one this year. Kyle Pitts, an absolute freak out there at tight end, 91 speed, not the greatest blocker, but who cares? If you can make impact plays when the ball is in your hands, I, I don't care. Uh, he is a superstar X-Factor, so he does have some abilities, but remember, our OC right now does not have the talent to actually let us equip those and use those, so they're just going to be sitting there until we make that upgrade, but he does have them. I do have to mention that I have made a couple of signings to fill out the roster and add some talent where I just thought we didn't really have enough. Uh, wide receiver was one spot where I just wanted to add somebody like John Ross, Somebody with some blazing speed that might actually help us this year, uh, if he actually makes the team, I guess. Jake Matthews at left tackle as we move on to the offensive line. He's one of the leaders on this offense, and he's going to be around for a long time, so hopefully he stays good. He is going to start getting hit with some regression here, so I guess we'll see how that ends up uh, working out for him. At right guard, Chris Lindstrom is somebody we got to build this offensive line up around. And we're going to obviously have to extend him at some point as long as he ends up playing well. Matt Hennessy at center. He does have star dev, hasn't exactly exploded onto the scene, but he still has a high ceiling. So hopefully we can develop him. On offense, we obviously have some holes and some position battles going on. Uh, I guess we'll see what they end up looking like in the preseason, but let's move on to the defensive side of the ball. Let's start up front with defensive tackle Grady Jarrett who is closing in on 30 years old, but is still one of the better interior defensive linemen in the NFL. Now, he is under contract through 2025, so we don't have to worry about at least one of the two defensive tackle spots uh, for a couple of seasons. The other spot is up for grabs this preseason. Marlon Davidson is going to have the first shot. He has star to have good block shedding and good power moves. The man that's going to be battling him is Doug Costin. He has star dev as well, good block shedding, and he's more balanced with his pass rushing skills but I guess we'll see what ends up happening in the preseason between those two. The edge rushers on this team are not great. You have Arnold Abichetti, a rookie out of Penn State that the Falcons drafted in the second round. He's got good finesse moves, but he's a rookie, so he's unproven. We don't exactly know what he's going to end up doing. The other spot was so bad, I went out and signed Everson Griffin to start at that position, but we also signed him because he has the mentor tag and is going to help boost weekly training XP for other players at his position, so hopefully he can help us develop uh, some people behind him. At middle linebacker, you have Deion Jones, who's got great speed, good coverage. The block shedding isn't amazing, but he's so fast that he might actually just avoid uh, needing that block shedding. Hopefully, that's that's what I hope. Troy Anderson, his potential replacement, or somebody that could even play alongside him. He's even faster than Deion Jones. Uh, the coverage needs a bit of work. 
and the block shedding needs a bit of work, but he's definitely somebody with a ton of potential. At cornerback, AJ Terrell, he's your number one. He's got good speed, good zone, good man. I'm not worried about him at all. He should be fine for us. But opposite of him, you have Casey Hayward. He's not a bad player. He's just getting up there in age. He's good in zone. The man's not amazing anymore. And the speed is not what it once was. But he's going to have to be cornerback too, at least for this year and maybe even next year. Strong safety, Tayshawn Gibson, another player that is like Everson Griffin that we went out and signed to start for us this year. But he also has that mentorship tag and can hopefully help us develop some people there in the secondary. So this team, it does have some holes, but I guess we have talked about it enough. We need to see what it actually looks like on the field. So let's go ahead and jump into some preseason action here. And we'll start here against the Lions on the road, starting on defense, Goff out there at quarterback. And he's gonna throw this one fading away, a terrible decision. And it falls right into the hands of Deion Jones. Inside the 20, inside the 10, it'll be a pick six to start things for the Falcons, I promise. The sliders do play better than that, but just a weird fluky play to start things. A great way to start for this Falcons defense, which is right back on the field after that pick six. It's going to be Ebik Keddy making his first tackle of the preseason as he brings down DeAndre Swift. An overall look at this Atlanta draft class. On paper, it looks really good, and hopefully it looks even better here in the preseason and beyond. Third and seven for the Lions, now into Falcons territory, a completion to Williams, but... He was out of bounds and never reestablished himself, so they'll call him for illegal touching. And now we get our first look at Mariota in this Falcons offense. He'll find Edwards there coming back across the middle. It'll be a gain of 15 and a first down. Edwards, hopefully he could be wide receiver one this year. That's a good start for him. Mariota under some pressure on second and seven, and he's going to get picked off. Not the best decision, not the most accurate throw, and just not a great look for Mariota as he tries to win this quarterback battle. So the Lions now a chance to tie us up in this first quarter. Goff down the field, a jump. Oh, it's going to be pulled down by Jamison Williams in the end zone as he makes up for that illegal touching call earlier, and he mosses Isaiah Oliver. Isaiah Oliver trying to win that cornerback three spot. Not the best look for him there, unfortunately. Patterson with a nice nine-yard run there to open the drive. Second and one, it's going to be a read option. Mariota going to use the speed and pick up a first down and more up across midfield. He really should have slid there, but I guess he wants to try to do everything he can to win this quarterback battle. Now Patterson, another first down. The ground came getting us going on this drive. Third and six in the red zone. It's going to be Drake London, the rookie, making his first catch and picking up the first down up to the 12. Second and seven. Marcus going to the end zone. It'll be caught by Kyle Pitts. A dangerous throw, but it'll work out for the Falcons as Pitts makes a great catch and gives Atlanta the lead again. Now into the second quarter, the backups in the game. Boyle, a play action fake. He's going to get sacked by Doug Costin. It'll be a loss of eight, bringing up second and long. And we'll jump to third and ten. Boyle under some pressure, firing down the field. It'll be over everybody's head, incomplete. And we'll get our first look now at Desmond Ritter. A rookie out of Cincinnati. A nice easy completion underneath. You'll find Bird. And you'll pick up 12 yards and a first down. Tyler Algier, another rookie on this team. His first carry. He's breaking tackles, hurling defenders, and finally getting brought down after a gain of 19. What a great way to start your career here in the NFL. Second and 10. Ritter down the field. He'll hit John Ross in stride. And Ross will take it into the end zone for a 52-yarder. And make this in a two-score Atlanta lead. I mean, what a great throw from Desmond Ritter. And really made it so John Ross did not have to stop. Now, late in the first half, it's going to get intercepted. Desmond Ritter trying to do too much there. And he'll get pancaked on his way to trying to stop this pick six that he is not able to stop. And yeah, just not really a great throw or decision. We're going to try to run this one into halftime. Williams getting a toss on the right side. He's going to lose the ball, and the Lions are going to pick it up and run it into the end zone. And just like that, two defensive scores for the Detroit Lions are, are going to give themselves a lead. I mean, Williams, a veteran, trying to make this roster and be one of our key backups. You cannot make mistakes like that. Late in the third quarter, Ritter still out there at quarterback finding Bird. And he's going to pick up a nice 13-yard gain there. Third and four. Desmond Ritter with plenty of time. He's going to find the rookie running back, McAllister. And he's up across midfield with a first down. 
Ritter under center. He'll fake it to Algier and go down the field, finding Pruitt. He's trying to become tight end two on this team, and that's a nice completion to him to help him do that. First and goal from the seven. It's a read option. Ritter is going to be able to walk into the end zone untouched and give the Falcons the lead again. Now we got to shout out the fullback here, Gillespie, making a nice key block and helping Ritter get into the end zone. He's trying to be our starting fullback and the only fullback we carry on the roster, and that will certainly help his case of being that. Third and eight here for the Lions. Boyle's going to load up and go down the field and throw an interception to Michael Griffin the second. A rookie out of South Dakota State. Uh, he's likely not going to make the roster, but that is certainly going to help him make the practice squad. Third and three for the Lions now. Down four in the fourth quarter. It's a sack by Bradley Anai. A couple of other Falcons there to help him uh, bring down the quarterback. Now late in the fourth quarter, Felipe Franks out there at quarterback, handing it off to Tyler Algier. He'll take it up inside the five and be brought down to the three, and that's going to make it goal to go. First and goal, a toss left side. Tyler Algier, a lead blocker in Gillespie, and he'll help him get into the end zone and make this a two-score Falcons lead. And the Falcons are going to go on to win this one 35-27 over the Lions. Now taking a look at this quarterback battle in the first game, uh, both of them showed some good things, showed some bad things, both through an interception. I mean, Ritter, I would say he played a little bit better, but he had some more attempts. He had a worse completion percentage, but uh, those were mostly throwaways, to be honest. Uh, the standout at running back, I mean, it's Tyler Algier. Seven carries, 44 yards, a nice rushing touchdown, breaking multiple tackles. Someone who disappointed was Damian Williams, four carries, four yards, and of course, that really bad fumble. Another player with a nice day was John Ross. I mean, only one catch, but it went for 52 yards and a touchdown, and it's exactly what we wanted to see out of him. Now, the defense had a couple guys that made some impact plays, but nothing that really crazy stood out to me. I mean, a bunch of different guys contributing there in the pass rush, and a couple of different guys there getting an interception. But we need to see some more from this team, so let's just jump straight into the second preseason game here against the Jets. Cordero Patterson, a nice 13-yard counterplay on the left side. From the 38, Mariota going over the middle. It's popped up in the air and intercepted. Oh, uh, man. Not the best look for this Falcons offense to start the game, but unfortunate for Mariota. This is not on him. That's on Edwards. He looked away at the exact wrong time and is going to get an interception against Mariota. So the Jets with great starting field position. They'll hand it off to their rookie running back, Hall. He'll get outside the defense and walk this one basically into the end zone untouched and give the Jets the lead. And we'll see if this Falcons offense can hang onto the ball. It's Patterson, another carry to start the drive. And he'll pick up a first down, two carries, 30 yards for Patterson. Now a read option, Mariota, we're going to keep it on the left side. He is going to fumble the ball, and the Jets are going to scoop it up. But fortunately for Mariota, this is going to go to review and get overturned. So the Falcons get to keep possession. Second and six, it'll be a hands-off to Kalen Balazs. He'll break a tackle and get across midfield and deep into the Jets' territory before finally getting knocked out of bounds over the nine. A 45-yard run by Kalen Balazs. That is certainly going to help his case for trying to be one of the backup running backs on this roster. Third and goal, Mariota going to the end zone. It will be caught by Brian Edwards. He'll make up for that earlier mistake and... I know there's a flag on the play, but it was interference on the defense, so it doesn't matter. We're going to be tied up at seven. The Jets would drive down the field pretty easily. Toss it to Hall on the left side. He'll get another nice, easy touchdown. Our defense not looking great in this one. And Hall looking absolutely great with the offensive line doing a good job for him. So Mariota and the Falcons offense back on the field. Here's Kyle Pitts on an RPO, throwing off a defender and across midfield up to the New York 41. That's going to end the first quarter. But a nice completion there to Kyle Pitts. Third and four. Marcus, he'll go over the middle, hitting Drake London. He'll get up inside the 10, down at the six, and make it goal to go. Third and goal again. It'll be another RPO to Kyle Pitts on the right side. He's not going to be able to get in. He'll get denied and drop there at the two, bringing up fourth and goal. And I believe the Falcons are going to go for this. Yeah, they will. Fourth and goal, Mariota. Try to make something happen. He'll go to the end zone into double coverage. It'll get batted away incomplete. And that entire drive will result in nothing for this Falcons team. The Jets offense back out there with the lead and possession. Here's Wilson extending out right side, getting hammered down in the end zone by Arnold Ebiketti. It'll be a safety. 
but the safety is not all on uh, Arnold Abiquetti. I mean, we got to shout out Doug Costin there, the initial pressure to make Wilson roll out. The Ritter out there now with mostly backups, but a couple starters. He'll fire left side and find Kyle Pitts, who is trying to get some work out there with Ritter, who could potentially still be our starting quarterback. Third and two, rolling right is Ritter right into a sack, and he'll get dropped out of field goal range, and that's going to force the Falcons to find a way. Under a minute to go in this first half. Wilson will go left side, and it'll be intercepted by Isaiah Oliver, jumping the route, and he'll take this one all the way back for a pick six, which is going to give the Falcons the lead right before the end of the first half. Isaiah Oliver, remember, trying to be cornerback three. Now in the third quarter, Joe Flacco out there for the Jets. He's under some pressure on getting sacked by Taquan Graham. And it'll be a loss of seven. And bring up third and long. Taquan Graham, he's right now just trying to make the roster and be some depth. Third and 15, Flacco is going to find Tyler Conklin. The ex-Minnesota Viking is up to the three, and that's going to make it goal to go. Flacco and the Jets facing third and goal. We'll see if he can make something happen. He'll spin out left, and he's going to get pulled down. That's Taquan Graham, who has had a nice day today. And Bradley Anai, remember, he had a half sack in the first preseason game. So he's had a nice showing in both of these games so far. The Jets do end up taking the lead after the field goal. 17-16, Ritter getting sacked on first down, a loss of eight. And that'll bring up second and 18. He has some time on this play. He'll go left side and hit John Ross. They're going to give him the first down. I don't think he got it, but they give it to him anyway. Third and eight up at the 47, Ritter will step up, take off, pick up a first down, lose the football. It's popped up in the air and scooped up by Isaiah Wilson. He is trying to latch onto this roster. It's really his third team. He's a former Georgia Bulldog, so I thought, why not give him a chance to see what he could do here? Uh, now a throw on second and seven will be intercepted. Ritter overshooting Nicole Pruitt. It just fell right into the hands of a Jets defender. So both quarterbacks throwing interceptions in the first two preseason games. Flacco down the field on second and five, finds Denzel Mims, and he's all the way up to the Atlanta 32. After the big play, the Jets are going to go bunch right on first down. Flacco spinning out left will dump it off to Carter, and he'll spin past a bunch of <laughs> defenders there and pick up a first down up to the 17. He made our defense look bad on that one. Second and goal. A toss left side to Carter. He'll walk this one into the end zone. Another rushing touchdown for the Jets as they extend this lead for themselves. So 24-16 here now in the fourth quarter. Ritter left side is going to find Olamide Zacchaeus. The undersized receiver, a nice catch there, staying in bounds, again in 19. Third and eight. Ritter trying to take off. He can't get away. He'll get sacked, and that'll bring up fourth down. And let's just wrap up this second preseason game Nothing really happening for us. That was good there in the last couple minutes. We lose big. Uh, stand out here, Kalen Balage, five carries, 56 yards. I know a lot of those yards came on one big run, but still a great showing for him. Kyle Pitts, I know he's amazing, but hey, five catches, 76 yards in limited playing time. He was great. And Taquan Graham, a sack and a half, three tackles for loss. He was great. Uh, Ebiketti also, I mean, he got a sack for that safety. Isaiah Oliver, he had that pick six. So some nice individual plays on defense but not a great overall showing from the defense we actually have enough staff points to get an upgrade of course we're going to use it on our offensive coordinator on the x factor on there so we can actually use kyle pitts uh, his abilities now we do have a couple of other things to do here before we get to the third preseason game a wide receiver mentorship and a training camp standout first the mentorship is bird trying to help out edwards who apparently couldn't hang on to anything last game i know he did have that interception hit off his helmet but Whatever, still we'll take the extra XP for him. And the camp standout is Ebiketti. Uh, I mean, where has he improved most? I guess we'll go rushing the passer. It's going to give him a boost to his power move and finesse move. A plus three to both of those. He is still obviously in his rookie season. I mean, hasn't even started yet, so that's great. Getting a boost to his pass rushing skills. Before we get to this last preseason game, we have to talk about this quarterback battle. I mean, neither of them has really separated. They're both playing pretty similar just fine nothing wrong with that but i, I want to see somebody separate so that way we could figure out who the heck our starter is going to be so for this last preseason game we're going to start ritter i want to see what he looks like some more with the ones we really haven't seen a ton of them with them so he's out there right now against this jacksonville defense taking off on third and ten 
And picking up a first down, a nice 17-yard scamper. Third and 13 from the 42. The Jaguars only rush three. Ritter down the field he goes, hitting Kyle Pitts for a first down. And he's in the Jacksonville territory to their 32. A nice 26-yard pickup. Second and 11. Ritter facing a blitz. Under pressure goes down. The pocket collapsing around him. Already the second sack of this drive for this Jacksonville defense. Third and 15 does Ritter. Have another third and long in him. He'll extend out right side, take off, and tiptoe on the sideline before getting knocked out just shy of the first down. And the Falcons, who are just going to kick a field goal and take a 3 0 lead, at least get some points on the board and some confidence for this offense. As Marlon Davidson makes a nice tackle there on first down, stopping Robinson for no gain. Second and 10. Four man rush. It's going to be Lawrence stepping into a sack. That's Arnold Ebaketti. Getting the strip sack. The Jaguars do recover, though. It's going to bring up third and long. Third and 15. Trevor Lawrence all day back there. Stepping up, going down the field into double coverage. It'll be broken up by A.J. Terrell. And the Jaguars are going to put it away. Here's Ritter on first down, finding Pitts. He's going to fumble the ball, but get right back on it. And I think he was down anyway, but still a nice job getting back on the ball. Now flip pass forward. Auden Tate. Haven't seen much of him this preseason. He is supposed to be wide receiver three this year. A nice uh, play by him there, third and seven. Ritter extending out and taking off, using his legs yet again to pick up a first down. That's three attempts, 45 yards for Ritter. Here on fourth and ten, Youngway Ku on to kick another field goal and make this a 6-0 Falcons lead in this first half. Now Mariota out there, quarterback, trying to make his case to be the starter. He's going to get strip-sacked in the end zone, and the Jaguars dive on it there, and... Get themselves a touchdown. Not the greatest look for Mariota as he rolls into a sack. So the Jaguars now with the lead, 7-6. Mariota over the middle finds Drake London. He'll have a first down and a gain of 12. Second and nine. All day back there for Mariota. Down the field he goes. A dangerous throw. It's caught by London, though. And he's going to lose the ball. It'll be scooped up. That is Josh Allen of the Jaguars scooping it up. And he'll be brought down. At their 21, London appears to be injured on the play. Maybe he's just faking it, though. I mean, sometimes players do that after they make a mistake. I mean, I wouldn't blame him still. Jacksonville with the lead, and they're going to add to it. Lawrence getting it in the end zone there on a read option to make it 14-6. So Mario to back out there. He'll fake it to Kalen Bellage. He'll step into this one down the field for London again. He breaks a tackle, and he's past the Jacksonville. defense, tripped up there for a second, but stays on his feet. It's another long play for this Atlanta offense, resulting in a touchdown. We've seen a couple of those this preseason. John Ross and there, Drake London. As Ritter's back out there, he's going to get sacked. Nowhere to go. Brought down by Walker. The number one overall pick, making a nice play. Second and 17. Ritter over the middle, finds Kyle Pitts. He'll have a first down and more. All the way up near midfield, up to the 45. Second and 10. Ritter against the Blitz. Over the middle, it's Drake London, another catch. He gets past a couple of Jaguars defenders. It's a foot race to the end zone. He's going to win his second long score of the game. I guess maybe he did just fake that injury as he's had a nice bounce back there, a couple of nice plays. Jumping ahead now into the fourth quarter. Jacksonville up 30-20. to 20. Mariota out there at quarterback, taking off on second down. Picking up 14 yards and a first down. Second and three, Mariota. A man wide open on the left side, McCole Pruitt. He is likely to be tight end two. I think he's earned that job with some nice blocking and also a couple of nice catches. Second and seven. Auden Tate, another catch for him. And he's got the first down up to the 15. Second and 10. Mariota will use his legs again. And power ahead there. Going to give him the first down up at the four, making it goal to go. Third and goal does Mariota. Have something in him. He'll go to the end zone and find John Ross for a late touchdown. And that's going to help us wrap up the preseason. We are unfortunately going to lose this one as well. 30-27 to to the Jacksonville Jaguars. A standout on offense. I mean, it's Drake London. Four catches, 183 yards, two scores. I know he had that fumble, but man, did he bounce back and showcase his limitless potential. He looked great. Also, Arnold Ebiketti. Two tackles for loss, a sack, a strip sack. He had a great preseason, and I'm excited to see what he can do in the regular season. Some more points here to upgrade some stuff. We'll go ahead and make 
Player personnel talents cost 10% less. That's going to help us out in the long run. Uh, some trades have been happening. Sam Donald getting dealt to the Giants for Will Holden and Richie James Jr. Alan Lazard going to the Jets. An in-division trade here. Russell Gage, a former Falcon, getting shipped off to the Saints. Along with Kyle Rudolph, CJ Gardner-Johnson going back to the Buccaneers. So weird trade there, but whatever. Uh, another one here. The Eagles end up getting Alexander Madison in a package deal. And the Vikings get Javon Hargrave in return. And also wanted to mention Kareem Hunt going to the Patriots. Remember, in my Texans franchise, he also ended up there. He gets shipped off for Jabril Peppers and Jacoby Myers going back to the Browns. So we have to talk about this quarterback battle. I mean, Ritter, he's the younger player. He played mostly with backups. So when you see the 10 sacks, most of those are honestly on the backup offensive line. Most of his incompletions were throwaways because of the backup offensive line. So I, I really think he played extremely well. But Mariota also didn't play that bad. They, they both played pretty similar. And I, I'm having trouble picking a starter. I honestly don't know what we're going to do. Let me know down below. Should we start Desmond Ritter or Marcus Mariota? The, the thing with Mariota is that he's a veteran. He's been around. He's probably not going to be our franchise quarterback down the line, which kind of gives the edge, in my opinion, to Ritter because he's the younger of the two. And we could develop him right now. If they're playing similar, you might as well go with the younger guy, right? I mean, I don't know, though. Yeah, let me know down below. So now it's time to make all these cuts. We're going to make 22 of them. I guess a couple extra as well, because I want to sign a couple of the available free agents. Uh, here are the cuts. Damian Williams doesn't end up making the team. Eric Harris, Dean Marlowe, Anthony Ferkser, Lorenzo Carter. Those are probably the biggest surprises, but none of them really played that great. So they're all off the team. Now for the signings. Jake Funk, he is brought in to be RB4. He has some okay ratings, does a couple of things well. I mean, it's just some running back depth. David Long Jr., only 25 years old, uh, offers a skill set we didn't exactly have at middle linebacker with some more hit power and some block shedding. Davion Taylor, a former second round pick with great speed at linebacker, a uh, decent block shedding. I think he's going to be a good special teams player for now and could develop into a starting linebacker. Grant Haley, he's going to be a dime corner for us and also play a little bit in the nickel. Naze Johnson, he was on the Chiefs practice squad, decided to scoop him up. He's got great speed there for our safety. The coverage isn't awful as a starting point. And remember, we do have Gibson Sr. at strong safety, who has that mentor tag, which should help Johnson develop in his rookie season. Now, this team, I know it does have some holes on it, but it also, I think, has some exciting young players like Drake London, Kyle Pitts that we want to see develop. Uh, the practice squad here, it's okay. Nobody too crazy on it. We'll probably have to make a couple of changes once we advance to the regular season because I'm sure somebody's going to get signed off of it. Let's take a look at our schedule. I would say we don't have an easy start there, getting the Saints week one, uh, the defending Super Bowl champions in week two on the road. We only have one primetime game week 10 against the Panthers on Thursday night football, a late bye week in week 14, and then we wrap the season up against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, we got to focus on the Saints in week one, and that's what we'll be taking on next time. But thanks for watching this one, and I'll see you then.